Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Carnegie Hall headliner Mike Rayburn. that I have to illustrate something that I am passionate about. And that is, I believe that we are each capable of far more than we ever knew was possible. I believe that we are each a gold mine of unrealized potential. And I think that we are surrounded every moment of the day by opportunities to access that potential. Opportunities that we miss. Opportunities to step beyond what's been done before, to challenge the status quo, uh, to look at old things in a new way. Uh, for me to try to play the guitar a little differently than it's been played for the last 500 years. So what I want to do with you today, in the short time that we have, is I want to share with you three simple tools that you can use immediately and forever to be able to access that potential. The first tool, to change anything, the first thing that has to change is our brains, our thinking. The thinking that got you where you're sitting right now will not get you any further. The most basic human brain function, cognitive function, is to ask questions. I don't know if you realize that. Thinking is questioning. At the basic, at the foundation of our thinking is questions. Uh, you're driving, you know, is the light turning red or green? Should I turn left or right? What did she say? What did she mean by what she said? <laughs> That's a guy question. What if? Will you ask the question, well, what if? What if I could? What would that look like? I, I know I can't, but what if I could? What would that look like? It opens up the possibilities, right? What if? Here's the interesting point. It doesn't mean you're going to do it. Okay? Counterintuitively, this is the power behind the question. There's absolutely nothing on the line. Zero commitment. What does that mean? It means that absolutely anything is possible. You've completely stepped over the why not. There's nothing in the way. What if I did that? What would it look like? But more importantly, the minute you ask that question, your brain changes. There's a fundamental foundational change. You are now no longer looking for reasons you can't. You're looking for reasons you can. This is an extremely important point. It's a powerful point. We have many limitations. Let me, let me take a moment right now and list all of our major limitations in life. Okay, I'm done. We have one, and what is it? Ourselves. It drives me nuts. This is why I do this program. I see it all the time. We as human beings negotiate away half of our opportunities, half of our potential in life at the front end of most endeavors because we tend to aim at the middle. We aim at mediocrity, and we hit it. And I don't want us to do that. So we've said it's ourselves, but let's get more specific. It's our fears. Okay, and while we have many fears as human beings, there are three that hold us back, statistically hold us back most often. They are the fear of failure, the fear of success, and the fear of rejection. You know, fear of failure. Oh no, what if we don't make our quota? Fear of success. What if we make our quota and they want us to do it again? <laughs> or fear of rejection. Oh no, what if we make our quota and now our friends all hate us? So we're going to do, in a keynote presentation, Dr. Seuss. Is that cool? Yes. As performed by Led Zeppelin. <laughs> Do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam. I am. I just took the songs I do know and played them country. <laughs> the first one that came out is a guy named Tom Petty. She's a good girl, loves her mama, loves Jesus, 
in America too. She's a good girl. She's crazy about Elvis. Loves horses and her boyfriend too. Now I'm free, free fall. Yes, I'm free. It works, man. Any song at all, you can make it country and I'll prove it. country song, man. Who knew? We're trying to manage change, right? Trying to manage change. There's change going on. Change in, the, change in the economy. Change in technology, right? Peter Drucker said it better than I ever could. Managing change is not only stupid, it's dangerous. The only way to manage change is to create change, to define the curve rather than follow it. And I would offer you this. When you ask the question, what if? What if we could do that? What would it look like? Again, you're coming up with a solution that is uniquely a product of your abilities and experiences or the abilities and experiences of your team. No one else would have come up with it, okay? So when we have the courage to follow that, you're now doing something no one else would have done or no one else would have done in the same way. This is Bruce Springsteen. Sings Green Acres. and we're poking fun at it. How often do we have the courage to do that? We don't do that with problems. You know what we do with problems? We deify them, and it drives me nuts. We put them on a pedestal, and we worship them. Oh, the problem, there's a problem. Look at the problem. My God, there's a problem. There's a memo about the problem, and a meeting about the problem, and a meeting about the memo about the problem, okay? And I'm not saying to diminish the importance of the problem. What I'm trying to say is if you can make fun of something, you, you can't make fun of something without standing outside of it. And when you stand outside of it, you come up with a better solution because you have a better perspective. It's a better solution every time, okay? I guarantee you. Just by asking what if. Number two, that's number one. Number two, we're taking a huge problem and we're not looking at it as a problem. We're finding it as an opportunity. And you hear that all the time, okay? You hear that all the time, you know, in, in motivational speeches. Problem equals opportunity. Let's go, right? You see those little magnets on the refrigerator. There's no such thing as a problem without a gift for you in its solving. <laughs> What's this beautiful? Okay. And it's true, but let's get real about that. How does that happen? How does problem become opportunity? It's you, and it's me. When we're willing to step beyond what's been done before and we say, hey, I know I can't, but what if I could? What would that look like? How could we do that? I got a request to do dueling banjos. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to play both the parts. I'm going to do the guitar like the same guitar player from the mountains of Georgia. But what if... The banjo player is from Baghdad. <laughs> Middle Eastern bluegrass, or blue sand, <laughs> with American bluegrass together. It's like chicken fried baba ganoush.
Richard Bach once wrote, here's a test to see if your purpose in life is over. <laughs> if you're alive, it isn't. Okay, that means there's most definitely a profound and divine and wonderful reason that we're all here, that we're all literally in these seats with whatever's going on in our lives. And we can talk about motivation. People say he does this motivational thing. I don't call it that, but let's talk about it. How do we motivate ourselves? How do we motivate the people around us? Almost always, reward and punishment. Reward and punishment. Reward, you get more money. Punishment, you get fired, right? And this is affected to a large degree. I'm not going to put it down. But let's just keep a perspective on this. This is the exact same way we train mice. How does that make you feel? What sets us apart as human beings is our ability to respond to the most powerful motivational force on this planet. And it is not power, sex, money, or fame. It's a sense of purpose. Why we do what we do means everything to us as human beings. The meaning behind it. The reason that we attach to it. So right away, you want to get more out of yourselves, more out of the people around you, more out of your lives, more out of your careers. Remember why you do what you do. So, if there's purpose and there's reason in the way that we spend our time, just right now, to yourself, think about how you spend most of your time and answer this question to yourself. Are you driving with the brakes on? Because most of us are. I'm guilty of it. Where we're like, yeah, 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 yeah. Kinda, kinda, kinda. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna... Maybe tomorrow, maybe tomorrow, okay? And the push-pull moves us sideways, and it drives me nuts. I see it all the time. So the third tool is the way to take the brakes off, and it is simply this. Become a virtuoso. Become a virtuoso, or, take it out of musical terms, resolve to be the best. Guitar Hero? My people. <laughs>